<laughs> for invitation. In, no. <clears throat> As you see, the title of my talk is the family of smooth four manifold with the same cyber with an invariant. You know, I talked, I talked this title, I talked this content with this title is uh, several times before. But you know, this is a colloquium talk, so I think it's worth it's worth to talk uh, or to advertise of this topic for a general, you know, the public. Okay. I think most of most of you get heard, you know, four manifold is different from the other dimensions. Uh, and and let me uh, briefly explain why and how you know four four dimensional world are different from you know other dimensions. Okay. Okay, so this is a basic question. So why, why are topologists and the geometers are interested in, in particular, smooth four manifold? Now, there are many reasons, and it depends on the, you know, the people. But I'd like to answer for this question in this way. Okay. In fact, before 1982, there was nothing known. What I mean, as far as I know, only one the fact is known that it's called, you know, Hirschfeld's signature theorem. What I mean, if X is closed smooth spin four manifold, then the signature of that manifold is divisible by 16. In fact, that's proved in 1950s. And bef and be beside this Hirschfeld's signature theorems. No, the nothing is known in smooth four manifold in particular. No? And in 1982, the Simon Donaldson you know, introduced the gauge theories. What I mean, you know, he studied some connections for for SU two bundles with second churn class is given some k. Then he proved really it's a fantastic some theorems regarding smooth four manifold. And after that, you know, there are so many, you know, the fruitful results that came out. And so in some sense, you know, the studying in smooth four manifold just started in 1982. And, and nowadays we know the many facts and also in the, we know get some the useful and the powerful the techniques to investigate smooth four manifold, but that 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 the Donaldson's introduction Donaldson's introductions in 1982 is a starting point, and 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 in turn, you know, dimension four is really different from other dimensions. For example, so you can okay if the manifold. The dimension of the manifold is, is less than or equal to three. For example, think about the dimension one and the closed. We, we, we assume that the old dimension, all manifold are closed and and connected. Then you know, think about the one-dimensional manifold, closed, connected one. Then there is a circle, you know, and also you know that in dimension two, you learned the classification of the dimension two in undergraduate course, right? And, and it turned out if the dimension of the manifold is less than or equal to 3, then topological manifold is the same as the smooth manifold. What I mean, given any topological manifold, then you can find smooth structures in given topological manifold. And furthermore, if the dimension of the manifold is greater than or equal to 5, then it's known and most finite many smooth structures on given topological manifold. Sometimes there's no smooth structures, and sometimes there are only finite smooth structures. Okay? So it, that's, that's in fact proved in, in around the 1960s. Okay? But in dimension 4, as I told you, in, 
before 1982 is nothing known. And, and it's really, you know, it's a mysterious, you know, it's a world, you know. Even nobody conjectured whether there are only finite smooth structures or the infinite many smooth structures for the smooth four manifold. And, and, and the gauge theory gave some the answers for this one. Okay. And, and, you know, in 1982, after Donaldson theory has been developed since 1982, there are so many, you know, fruitful results came out, but the problem is, it's very, really difficult and too hard to compute. Uh, so, only a few people working on smooth four manifold uh, studied, studied the, this Donaldson invariance and then. And, and then the situation is totally, you know, it's, uh, it's changed in mid-1990s, 1994. The cyborg, with, cyborg, cyborg and Edward Witten introduced the similar type of Donaldson theories, so-called cyborg Witten theories. And the basic, the background, basic, the basic background is the same, with the same as Donaldson invariant. But the, the, the main, main, the main point for the cyber Witten theories is really simpler than Donaldson theories. And then, and then, the, for ordinary, what I mean, for even graduate students working on some four manifold, they can compute some invariant for these cyber for these cyber Witten theories. And so when we compare to Donaldson theories, then you see everything is really, you know, is is came down to the normal world. And even though that the computation is so easy, but the result is much more powerful than the Donaldson invariant. And so that is the reason why uh, people are so excited. And, and after that, you know, you know, so many people, even ordinary people, working on Isomus 4 manifold, study the cyber witten theories and, and, and some related topics. And now, as you see, the, the title of today, the title of my talk today is this a family of Isomus 4 manifold with the same cyber witten invariant. So let me explain what cyber written invariant and cyber written, cyber written theory is and, and you know, why, why these are so powerful in smooth four manifold. Okay, let me start with the oriented closed Riemannian four manifold. And we start, because this is oriented you know, Riemannian four manifold, you can think of the frame vector bundle, frame, or I mean frame the fiber bundles, and SO4 frame bundles associated, associated, associated to its tangent bundle. And, and also, you can choose for any characteristic line bundle. What I mean is the first chunk class of this characteristic line bundle is the integral lifting of second Stipulitini class of X. Okay? Of course, you can, you can show, you can prove, you should prove, you know, such a, such a character line bundle exists, but for a moment we just assume such a character line, bu such character line bundle exists. Then from these character line bundles, together with these SO4, SO4 frame bundles, you can construct spin C structures. What I mean, spin C principal bundles, say P tilde, which in this is complex spinner bundles, and that is in fact is given by this is spin C, spin C principal bundles, and this delta is the canonical representations from spin C group to GL C4. Then by using these representations, then you can construct associated complex spinner bundles. And then by using the volume element, then you can decompose these complex spinner bundles with positive complex spinner bundle and negative complex spinner bundles. 
and the rank of this complex spinner bundle is 4 because think about this and this, this, this C4 is, is, is act like the fiber space so each this the plus spinner bundle and the negative spinner bundles has rank 2 and it turned out as I said, this delta is irreducible representations of spin C to CL4 and, and it turned out this plus minus complex spinner bundle, in fact this is isomorphic to the, the tensor of the, these two locally defined bundles. What I mean where this V plus minus is locally defined spinner bundle. What I mean now, we start from SO4 frame bundles. If X is a spin, then we can lift this SO4 frame bundle to spin 4 frame bundles. But in general, we cannot lift. Okay. We can lift only when this X is a spin. But we can lift the locally. But globally, this cannot be vector bundles, but lo still locally we can, we can have this it's a locally spinner bundles. It's the same way, this is a Kelsey line bundle. In case W2 is 0, which is equivalent to the spinning of X, then the first chunk class of this one is, is even, because if this is 0, then there is another line bundles whose Tensoring with itself is given this one. But if this W2 is not zero, then it's the same way it is L hap. L hap means, you know, the tensoring with itself is given L. But this one is not defined globally. If W2 is not zero, but still this is locally defined. And, and the point is, you know, by tensoring, with all these locally defined spinner bundles together with this L half, then you will get the globally defined these complex spinner bundles. That means the you know, obstructions to be a globally defined spinner bundle of this one is exactly the same as the obstruction for this to be globally defined line bundles. So when you tensoring of this one then that obstruction disappeared. So we can get these the spinner bundles and, and they turned these plus minus complex spinner bundles are the film of pick two of this. And furthermore, this L is, a, is re realized as a determinant line bundle of this plus minus complex spinner bundle. And you'll see. And also, you can think levitch Chibra connection on P, in, you know, this is tangent bundles, tangent bundle on X, so there's a unique connections, which is metric comparable and torsion free, and we call it levitch Chibra connections. So you can also think that levitch Chibra connection in here, and, and then just, li just lift that levitch Chibra connections P to P tilde. And, and if you choose the unitary connection A on L, then by tensoring this one with this, that induces some connections on these complex spinner bundles. Okay? And in some, sometimes we also call this levitch connection because this is induced from levitch connections together with some unitary connections on L. And in this way, we can find or we can construct Dirac operator. And that's, that's the standard way to construct a Dirac operator. What I mean, you know, the composition of the Clifford multiplication together with these levitch chivita connections is called Dirac operator. Okay? So this is well known. In fact, this is well known, the procedures. Okay? It's nothing new. And what's cyber, what is Cybertin equations? The Cybertin equations are, oh, this is wrong. Yeah, it's, it's this is misspelling, you know. It's a, it's a pair of equations 
for the connections and the sections of these complex, positive complex spinner bundles of this. The first one is, this, as I told you, this dA is a Dirac operator. And so the Seibowitz equations are this, the pair of equations. As dA, what I mean, A should be the kernel of the Dirac operator. And what is F sub A? F sub A is, is the curvature of the unitary connection A. And plus means, you know, this is a self-dual part. And self-dual part is some, some, some quadratic element. That means, you know, the psi is a section of this, the positive complex spinner bundle, which is rank 2. So when you compute this one, then you can view this one as a 2 by 2 matrix. And this 0 means trace free of that complex. And in the second equation, you will see this metric of given manifold x involved. What I mean, if you choose different metric, then the second equation is changed. Because, you know, the left-hand side of the second equation depends on the metric. Because this is a self-dual self part of the curvature of the connection A. Okay? And so we want to study, we want to study the solutions of the Seibowitz equations. So in order, to, in order to study the solution of these type of equations, we have to put these equations in some linear or nonlinear elliptic framework. For example, think about, you know, implicit function theorem or inverse function theorems in finite dimensional case. You know, if some function from the finite dimensional manifold x, x to y, you know, you know, if q is a regular value, what I mean, let's talk. Okay. Okay. Can you see this? No? Think about, think about just a smooth map from finite dimensional manifold x to y, and if q is regular value, then you know the inverse image of the regular value is a submanifold. Right? But unfortunately in our case, unfortunately in our case, the domain is this. The Seibowitz equations are the equations for this domain, and this domain, the dimension of this domain is the infinite dimensional case. And so, okay, we want to we wanna put these equations in this way, but in order to do that, we have to complete for this space. So because of this, we need to put this one in nonlinear, some elliptic framework. So for this one, first we have to complete with some appropriate norm. Because in general, this one is infinite dimensional space, but this is not complete. Unless this is complete, then you cannot apply, apply implicit functions or inverse function theorems. Okay? So in order to put, or in order to apply, then you have to the complete of this domain and also you know, in the target space. <coughs> so in this way, with some is appropriate norm, we have to the complete this domain in this way. <coughs> and, and, and where uh, what I mean, you know, in fact, this, this, what is this? This one is the space of all unitary connections on L. And this one is the smooth sections of the positive spinner bundles. So we have to complete this one. And then for this one, and we, have, we need some metric. And then we denote this 
space of unitary L22 connections with this norm, L22 norm. Yeah? And also this L22 of this one is a space of L22 sections. So that means okay, we have some space of smooth sections and we need some norm or metric to complete those space. We need L22 norm. Of course, you can choose any norm which is greater than 2. For example, L2, you can choose L2K norms or the L2K connections. But in turn, up to gauge transformations, they are the isomorphic. So, so it is enough to choose L22 norms. So, for these cyber-witten equations, it's the same as of this. We, start, we set a function, say, capital F, from the completion of this, the completion of this, which is this, to this space. Just by arranging, just by arranging this A psi to this one. So, the first one is just a second equation, just to move this one to the left-hand side. That is the second equation. And that the second one is the, the first equation. So the solution of this Cybertin equation is the same as F inverse zero. And, and we know this is the, the Banach space and also the Banach space. So, so now we can apply some inverse function theorem or implicit function theorems. Okay, in order to study the solution of these equations. Okay? This is the standard way to study this type of equations. Okay, but we have some group actions acting on those space, so-called the gauge transformation group. That is defined, in fact, that is Gauge transformation group on spin C principal bundle is uh, just spin C equivalent to automorphism bundles. And it turned out this one is the same as, it's uh, just auto L is a complex line bundles. So automorphism of L is a trivial bundles. Think about it's a transition map. And, and, and for, for this the transition map for this L is suppose this is G alpha beta, then the transition map of this automorphism of L is some inverse times G alpha beta times inverse inverse. So it's, it's, it's the, the group is U1 is the abelian. So it turned out the structure group of this automorphism L is trivial. So that is the reason we can identify this gauge transformation group Originally, that is defined as a space of spin C equivalent bundle automorphisms, but it turned out these are the same as the C infinite map from X to this automorphism L, very mean section of this one. But the, this is a trivial bundle, so it's, it's a nothing other than just it's a S1 map. So as the same A, we have to com complete this space because you know this is a just a smooth map and so we, we have to complete this space. This is infinite dimensional space. So as the same way we we put some metric or some norm and in this case we put L23 norms. Okay? Of course you can you can put any norm which is greater than three, L2K norm. But L23 norm is enough okay, to get the result to what we wanted, you know. Then, this gauge transformation group act on the domain in this way. For any element unitary connection A and the section Psi, and the sigma is a just, think about this, it's a map from X to S1, and this one is just, it's a composition of this, and this is a just ordinary multiplication. And, and then it, it turned out, oops, where it was, where, where it, yeah, for this one, the second part is missing. For the first part is 
just by computation of this one is given like this. Okay, when we fix, because the space of all unitary connection is the affine space, so if we fix A, then all we can transfer to the vector space. So in this way, this the action of A by the sigma is given like this, and the second part is the same. And we take a quotient. This is a domain of the Seibuiten functions. And then we take a quotient. Then the, the problem is this action acts on this domain not freely. If this is a free, what I mean, if this gauge transformation group action is a free, then in some sense, this space, which is a quotient space, is easy to understand. But in general, this one, the, this gauge group does not act freely. And, and, and in fact, in fact, you can find the stabilizer of the actions. And if psi is not zero, then in fact, stabilizer of the A psi is one. Because, you know, second part, think about this. What is, what is a stabilizer? Stabilizer means, you know, any element here, this one is the same as the original A psi. Right? So, from this one, if this one is the same as, think about this, then the second part should be zero. If this, this one is the same as A psi, then the second part should be zero. And the second part should be zero means D sigma zero. So sigma should be constant. But if sigma is a constant, but this second action, we want this one is the same as psi. But if we know sigma is a constant, so this is the same only when sigma is one. Right? So stabilizer, as long as this psi is non-trivial, which I mean, what I mean is not equal to zero, then stabilizer of a psi is one. So the quotient near this element we call irreducible element, then the stabilizer is, is trivial. So it acts like freely. But if psi is zero, then we know this one is a zero, always zero. But still here, this is the same as A as long as D sigma is zero. So D sigma is zero means sigma is a constant. Sigma is a map from X to S1. So the so stabilizer of this one is S1. It's a constant map. So near, near this irreducible, irreducible element, and when you take a quotient, then there is a cone on some space. So that means this quotient space has some cone point, and that cone point comes from the reducible element. If this is not, if it's away from this reducible element, then we know this is still smooth space. Okay. Then what is cyborg moduli space? That means, we, as, I, as I told you, you know, we want to study the solution of Seibowitten space, Seibowitten equations. And, and from that space, and we want some topological invariant or some smooth invariant. Eh? And Seibowitten moduli space, which is denoted by m sub xl, is defined in this way. What I mean? The solutions of, solutions of all Seibowitten equations, all solutions of Seibowitten equations quotient by gauge transformation group. And M star means we want, we want only irreducible solutions. We don't want reducible solutions. Why? If there's some reducible solutions, then there's a cone point. So we want to we you know, exclude these reducible solutions. But if it exists, then they might have some problems. Okay, but, but 
the fortunately, if we choose some nice metric or some nicely nice perturbations, then we can exclude all such reducible solutions. Now, anyway, we want the all solutions quotient by gate transformation group. And we call this cyber written modular space. And then we want to study this space. And, and, and it turned out for the generic metric of X, this M sub X of L, the solution of cyber written equations quotient by gauge transformation group is compact, oriented, smooth manifold with possible singularities this one of these dimensions. The, and, and the key and really Im, important ingredient is for this modular space is a compact oriented manifold. And then, and then you can come, you can, you can, you can easily, you know, they induce this, this modular space is a smooth manifold with appropriate settings. And then you need to show for this compactness. And then, and this one, the, the, the dimension of this modular space can be computed in its, its tangent space. Okay. okay. So, this is a technical part. So now let me explain why this cyber theory and this modular space are so important in the cyber invariant in theory, is what I mean. You know. And there are some several remarks for this modular space. For example, if this, it, as I told you, this A is, this is a reducible solution, then, in fact, the second equation is a trivial. If psi is zero, then second equation is such as f sub a plus equal zero. f sub a plus means self-dual part of curvature of connection A. So the A is anti-self-dual connections. And, and furthermore, it's a, it's a P2 plus is positive. This P2 means you can, you can view this one as a dimension of self-dual harmonic two-form space. <coughs> And that's positive, then, in fact, it, this L is a flat, genetically, there's no anti-self-dual connections. So we can exclude this one, as long as we have one for the genetic metric. Okay? So we don't, have to, we don't have to worry about these possible singularities. Okay? And this is another the feature for the cyber equations. If, for example, X has a positive scalar curvature metric, then the only solution for this one is irreducible, irreducible solutions. There is no irreducible solutions. So because of this fact, you know, one can study smooth four manifold, whether smooth four manifold admits positive scalar curvature metric or not. No. And, and this is an important fact. There are only finitely many characteristic line bundles which admits solutions with non-negative dimensions, non-negative non dimension of the solution space. Okay. So we, there, are, there are infinitely many, there are infinitely many characteristic line bundles, infinitely many choices of characteristic line bundles which correspond to H2 of X. But among among those H2s only finite many admit solutions whose dimension of the modular space is non-negative. Because of this, we, we can deal only such cathode line bundles. And, and it turned out those are smooth invariant. Here is, here is the general definition of cyber invariant. Okay, you can view this cyber invariant for given smooth manifold as, as a function from the space of spin C structure to integer, where this integer is given by this. If the dimension of the modular space is even and non-negative, then we can, we can integrate over the modular space. And otherwise, then we set this zero. 
And this, as I told you, this is compact oriented manifold, smooth manifold of the given dimensions. And beta is some, some element. In fact, it's a generator of this space, second generator of this space. And, and in, in some way, this means it's just evaluate this cohomology class with fundamental class in this space. That, that's the meaning of this integration. So, you know, as long as this moduli space is non-negative, and we know this is a compact oriented, so there is a, the fundamental class eh, of, of these dimensions, and then we want to evaluate some cohomology class with respect to this fundamental class. There is this. So we call this Cybertin invariant for this characteristic line bundle L or spin C structure. And then, I, as I told you just in, in, in previous page, there are only finitely many this spin C has non-negative non-negative dimensions of moduli space. So, so we can denote the Cybertin invariant for the smooth four manifold in this way. This is such a, is, is a, such a notation. What I mean that we just use this e to the, the first chunk class of the line bundle and whose coefficient is Cybertin invariant of this. And this is inf formally infinite sum of all spin C structures, but it turned out only finitely many this spin C has non-trivial of this. So, in fact, this one is a finite sum. And then we call this Cybertin invariant of X. And as long as the Cybertin invariant is non-trivial, we call this C on L, sometimes L, the Cybertin basic class. <coughs> and the point is, both this basic class and invariant are smooth invariant of given X. What I mean, if, okay, if X and Y are oriented preserving the homomorphic, then it's Cybertin invariant of X is the same as Cybertin invariant Y. In other words, we can view this in this way. If Cybertin invariant of X is different from Cybertin invariant of Y, then X can't be the homomorphic to Y. So, because of this, we call cybertin invariant is a smooth invariant or diffeomorphism invariant. Okay, here is applications of smooth form manifold. Why those invariants are so powerful in, in studying smooth form manifold? If X is smooth form manifold with non trivial cybertin invariant, then we know 1 plus P2 plus minus P1 is even. This, this, comes from, this comes from the dimension of the moduli space. Okay? It's, it's very simple. You just, co just compute the dimension of the moduli space. For this, if we assume the Cybertin invariant is non-trivial. And for that character line bundle, we just compute this one. But this one is nothing to do with the character line bundles. In particular, in particular, if X is simply connected case, what I mean, if X is a simply connected smooth four manifold with non-trivial Cybertin invariant, then this is trivial, 1 plus B2 plus is even, which means B2 plus odd. You already know for the Keller surface, B2 plus is odd. No? The B2, B2 is in, in algebraic geometry, that is 1 plus twice geometric genus. Eh? So it's odd, we already knew that. But we can extend such result for the non-trivial Cybertin invariant for any simply connected smooth four manifold with non-trivial Cybertin invariant. And, and, and also, if Cybertin invariant of this L of X with respect to L is non-trivial, then you can, or you can easily compute Cybertin invariant of X with respect to L inverse. Okay, that is related by this one, and this number is a universal number. 
It's nothing to do with the L. Huh? And furthermore, this is another the powerful result, powerful application of cyber invariant. What I mean, if X is smoothly connected to sum of other two manifold with both B2 plus a positive, then cyber invariant of X is trivial. And if X is blowing up of the other manifold, other smooth manifold, then we can compute cyber written invariant of X is just cyber written invariant of Y times some this one, where this E is an exceptional curve in CP2. What I mean, for, I'm going to mention for the complex surface and the symplectic manifold, and then those are non-trivial fiber written invariant. Then we can conclude, for example, complex, complex surfaces cannot be a connected sum, what I mean smoothly, cannot be a connected sum of other smooth manifold because with, with both sides positive. Because, you know, if it's a connected sum of these other smooth manifold, then they should be invariant trivial. But we know for the complex surfaces, even symplectic manifold is non-trivial cyber written invariant. So they cannot be a connected sum of other ones. And if this is a blowing up, then we also know we can trace how to compute cyber written invariant. For example, you know, when cyber and written introduced this cyber written theory, they also computed for the cyber written invariant for minimal complex surface of general type. What I mean, you know, if X is a minimal complex of general type with canonical class K, then cyber written invariant of this one is this. Which means there are only one cyber written basic classes, which is, which is nothing other than canonical class up to sign. And also cyber written invariant for this canonical class is just a plus minus one. Okay? And for other Capital line bundles is all cyber written invariants are trivial for this minimal. And, and, and you know, and, and, and several people, for example, Fintchel and Stone, and proved if X is simply connected to the elliptic surface with holomorphic orthoclastic N and with no multiple fibers, then cyber written invariant of this elliptic surface is given by this. So topologically, you can classify all complex surfaces, either rational or ruled surfaces, or elliptic surfaces, or general type. Okay? And, and for the general type, yeah, you can compute cyber invariant. And for elliptic surfaces, what I mean, simply connected to the case, you can, you can compute this one. And for rational or ruled surfaces, also you can compute that one in a similar way. But in rational or ruled surfaces, there are some delicate the problems because there's P2 plus equals 1. So I don't want to mention it here. And after this, after this result, not immediate Tops, Tops immediately proved he extended this result to symplectic manifold. What I mean if X is a minimal symplectic manifold with P2 plus is greater than 1, then cyber written invariant of the canonical class is non-trivial. In fact, he proved that it's a plus minus 1. He didn't mention for the other class. Here, when we compare this, example, this theorem with this theorem, we know, we know all cyber written basic classes for the minimal surface, so com min complex surface the minimal complex surface of general type, but here we know at least for the canonical class is non-trivial. Okay? But we don't know, even up to now, we don't know okay, what other classes have non-trivial cyber written invariant. Okay, we have some, some constraint, but in some sense, this is sufficient enough to apply in many cases. Okay, let's go back to the first, first, you know, the page. And then, if I told you, you know, 
you know, in dimension, if dimension of the manifold is less than or equal to 3, the all smooth structures are the same as, you know, topological structures, and if dimension is greater than 5, then only finitely many smooth structures on given topological manifold. And I didn't mention about in dimension 4. And, and due to, due to the result of the cyber written theories, or Donaldson theories, and we know, at least, most known simply connected irreducible smooth 4 manifold, sp2 plus pi is greater than 1, and art admits infinitely many distinct smooth structures. And so, the situation in dimension 4 is really different from other dimensions. Okay. And, okay, okay, for this one, let, let me mention briefly uh, what is the basic strategy for this one. Okay. Given, given simply connected the smooth 4 manifold with non trivial cyber written invariant, and try to find a way to produce some infinity family which are all homeomorphic to given x, but the invariant are mutually different. Okay. So here's a point, here's a, a two point in, in these strategies. First, try to find a way to produce such an infinity family, which are all homeomorphic to given x. And the second point is to compute cyber invariant. And if we can distinguish all those i with invariants are different mutually, then, you know, this xn and xm are homeomorphic, even homeomorphic to x, but have the different i with invariant, so cannot be diffeomorphic, but homeomorphic. So we can pull back the smooth structures. So in this way, we can, we can impose infinitely many different smooth structures on x. That's the standard way. And, so what is the main techniques to find a way to produce such an infinite family? There are many ways, main techniques, for example, so fiber sum surgery, logarithmic transform, not surgery, Rottinger surgeries, and, and some other ones. And in, in some sense, in some sense, these techniques are the well known before. And of course, some of them is new. For example, Nassari is introduced in the newly in, in 1998. But basically, this is a topological surgeries. Okay, you can perform these surgeries in, in topological categories. Right? I mean, in, in smooth categories. And, and then the hard part is to trace cyber written invariant under such a surgeries. And in the last 20, more than 20 years, you know, the you know, topologists and the geometers working on four manifold, you know, the completed such formulas. Okay, under, under these, it's, it's surgeries. Okay. As I told you, most known simply connected, it is double sums four manifold, it admits infinite many. And, but still, still, we don't know whether. One of these, for example, S4, CP2, S2 cross S2, is just, just blowing up once from CP2. These are simply connected smooth 4 manifold, and, and in fact, this is a well known and it's a most familiar simply connected smooth 4 manifold. And whenever you study or whenever you encounter the 4 manifold, and these are the examples. And the, the irony for this gauge theory or cyber written theory, Donaldson theory is, you know, we don't know. We cannot determine whether this well known smooth four manifold admits more than one smooth structure or not. No. We know most known simply connected smooth four manifold admits infinitely many, but these are well known. In, 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 in some sense, you know, we want to know, at, at, at the first step, we want to know whether this well-known four-manifold admits smooth structures or not, more than one smooth structure or not. And for example, S4, the problem for S4 is smooth version of the Poincaré conjecture in dimension 4. No, but still, we don't know yet. Huh? Okay, we know for the, for the completed 
smooth four manifold, but we don't know the answer for the simplest ones. Yeah. Are equivalent? Equivalent to what? Like if you find two or one of them, are they up? No, 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 no. So I, I don't, I don't think. For example, for example, if you can find infinitely many smooth structures for CP2, then, then this one is automatically infinitely many, you know, these things smooth structures. But that's nothing to do with this one. It's, it's a different one. What about S4? If you find infinitely many for S4, uh, they imply the others? I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But, but, well, in fact, you know, it, Cyberton theory as well as Donaldson theory cannot apply, cannot apply for this, this space, in particular S4, because there is no way to, to apply in this case. And in some sense, you can apply CP2 or S2, but not S4. Yeah. yeah, this is still, you know, intact, you know. But the point is, even, even though, even though Cybergotin theories and Donaldson theories are so powerful, and, and we know when we compare to 30 years ago, then we know so much about 4-manifold, but still we don't know about smooth structures on this one. These are the simplest examples and well-known for manifold but we don't know the answer for this one okay that's, that's the you know it's the advertisement of the five written series in four manifold <laughs> and and in fact this is the question what I'm okay going to answer and the first, what, what's the question? Question is, are this, this cyborgitin invariant fine enough to, dis, to distinguish smooth four manifold? Yeah. You know, in, in some sense, Donaldson invariant are the first smooth invariant, different of invariant, and then cyborgitin invariant in, uh, is the second smooth invariant. But, but you know, more or less they are the same, equivalent. So the Donaldson invariant are cyborgitin invariant are the smooth, first smooth invariant, first diffeomorphic invariant. But natural question is whether such an invariant is fine enough. What I mean is can we distinguish smooth four manifold? That's a natural question, right? So the problem is, find a pair of smooth manifold, X and Y, with the same cyborgitin invariant, which is homeomorphic, but not homeomorphic. Okay. If we cannot find, what I mean, if there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between the family of all smooth four manifold and this invariant, then it's really fantastic. But, you know, nobody, you know, expect that. And, and, and we know that's not possible. That's impossible. So, the, the problem is that people think about these, these problems. Try to find a pair of smooth four manifold, X and Y, with the same cyborg invariant, but not the film P. What I mean, you know, they are trying to find some counter examples of these fundamental questions. Yeah? Think about interpolitical levels. You know, it, you know, you, you know a fundamental group is not enough to distinguish, you know, that even in topological levels. Okay? So you can, you can, you can give you the cyborgitin invariant in smooth levels. But, simply connected the case is that the problem is still open. Even there's no single counter examples known. It's another irony, you know. No? Yeah. When, when we studied the disciplinary invariant transfer series is more, more than 30, almost 30 years, right? But, you know, the people at first time, it's easy to find such an example. But it turned out still open problems, even in st simply connected case. Okay? So if you can find such an example, counter examples, then you will get fame. 
and non-simply connected case. And the first example is just the single examples. It's given by Finch and Stern in 1999. And, and the Kian Yun and myself trying to extend their result. That's the topic, in fact, of today. What I mean, you know, in 1999, this manifold, okay, how, how many, how many is that? Okay, okay, very good. <laughs> okay. okay they, they constructed such an examples. Okay, th this manifold is obtained from knot surgery manifold by using some, the, some, the bridge knots. Okay? And these two manifolds, they proved they two manifold homeomorphic, one not homeomorphic, symplectic manifold with same cyber written invariant. The fundamental group is given this G5. And we try to extend this one. Okay. What I mean, for each positive integer, and there exists a family of two and two to the end distinct non-simply connected symplectic manifold with the same cyber written invariant, which are all homeomorphic but not homeomorphic. And what I mean that non-simply connected. And in fact, in fact, this invariant, this fundamental no, fundamental group is uh, some cyclic group. Okay. What, what is the n related to your let, 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 let me show. Okay, we, we start from for each integer n. And then okay, let me show why we need some two to the n the, the distinct family. Okay? This is not surgery is techniques. What I mean, okay, let me let me skip this part. Okay? The basically basically whenever whenever X is a closed four manifold which contains the embedded torus with self system trivial, then just remove tubular neighborhood of torus from X. And you choose you can choose any knot in S3, then then this M sub K is a, is a three manifold obtained by zero framed surgery and along K and then take a product S1 and then fiber sum. Okay, in this way, here X, just remove tubular neighborhood, and then here from S3, just M, we just remove the tubular neighborhood from S3, and then take a product. Here, meridian, cross S1 is another torus. And so, so the, by identifying this torus with this, this one, the boundary, the parallel of this one, then we can construct a new smooth four manifold. So, and 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 then finish turn proved in under this way under under some the mild conditions they proved x of k is homeomorphic to given x and the cyber written invariant of this x of k is cyber written invariant of x times some alexander polynomial of this so as long as alexander polynomial of the knot is non trivial then cyber written invariant of this one is different from this but we know under these conditions, then we can show this x of k is homeopic to x. Okay, that's are so powerful theorems. And, and what I mean, this theorem produces infinity family of smooth manifold, which are all homeomorphic, but not diffeomorphic to each other. But the, the point is, this is the simply connected case. Okay? And, and, but still open problem left. You know, for example, let's try to find infinite family of unique given knot which share the same Alexander polynomial. If if they share the same Alexander polynomials, then they have the same cyber written invariant. But if this is in, in, in equivalent knot, then we don't know whether this is diffeomorphic or not this one. And then we, we expect they are not diffeomorphic. Okay, like, like this. Okay, so in either ways, once you can prove, then you will get some what the, could solve, you can solve open problems. Okay, that's, that's not point. Okay, this is a, okay, we, we want to choose a, some special type of knot. For example, two bridge knot. Okay, that, that is a given by, given alpha and beta, you can, you can express this alpha over beta, no, no, beta over alpha, I'm sorry. And in this way, and then have right and twist of this in this way. If this is odd, case odd, then you can just 
twist in this way. If it's even, then you can twist this way. Then you will get, we call this type is tube bridge knot. Of course, there are other ways to characterize this tube bridge knot. And why this tube bridge knot is, 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 is popular or is interesting? And in fact, these two bridge knots are classified by double coverings of S3. What I mean, what I mean, you know, this, for example, let KPQ denotes two bridge knot, then double branched cover in S3 is a length space LPQ. And that's, this is the one way to, you know, to characterize this two bridge knot. Okay? And also, you can easily compute the Alexander polynomial for these two bridge knots. So what I mean, the Alexander polynomial of these two bridge knots is the VPQ is a corresponding cipher matrix and then some determinant of this. And furthermore, you know, if this, this number is just plus or minus one, then this type of two bridge knot is in fact a fiber knot of the, of the genus G. And then you can yeah, you can, yeah, okay. realize of this, and and so, so what's what's uh, okay? The main constructions, constructions is a step one. For each integer, find the family of two to the n in equivalent fibered two-bridge knot with the same Alexander polynomials. In in this way. What I mean, we cannot find such and such the two to n in equivalent to two bridge knots directly, but we can find such a two to n distinct families in recursively. What I mean, no. So we can choose. We can choose some k for each n. Let's fix n. Then k p n q n i. This i is changed from zero to two to the n minus one, where this i is uh, as a binary expansion of this one, okay? And then, then you can you can find such an i, okay? Then in this way, why 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 do I need? Okay, we want you can find you can find you know the infinitely many two bridge knots. We want some special type of two bridge knots. In particular, they share the same Alexander polynomials. Okay, because of this, we want some this. And in fact, the Alexander polynomial is in, 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 in there's some way to compute Alexander polynomial. Yeah, yeah, so, so that's not, yeah, okay. And, 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 and what's the second, second step? Is a, as a second step, and perform knot surgeries along K3 surface using two bridge knots. Yeah? And, and for example, this. Suppose this is a case three surface and this is genetic fiber. Then think about the family of knot surgeries where this X is a case three surface and we just you know this this is this is you know you can obtain this one as how, how can I say? Okay. Let let, let me Here we have two bridge knots, say PN, QN, I, and then take double branched coverings along this branch knot K. Then we have this is two fold branch coverings. And then we have PN. Q and I, and here, this is a branched, curve, branched set, and inside here we have the inverse of, of this one, say B bar, of P and Q and I. Okay. And, and here we have some P and P sub N covering. What I mean, regular covering of this. Then we'll get S3. And then when you take covering, PN coverings, then 
this part will be pn component of rings. So let's say b pn qn i tilde. Then this is the pn links. It's a link, link with p sub n component. And here, from here, let's say x sub p n q n i as connected sum of k3 surface together with s1 cross this length space p n q n sub i. Okay. And here we have the meridian of this one, say, we have inside the meridian of this one, and then take product this S1, then this is a torus, say TM. And then from this K3 surface, we choose a genetic fiber, and by identifying the genetic fiber together with this TM, then we'll get this family of four manifold. And then you can show this one as pi one is the G, PM, PN, and we have, because of this I, we have 2 to the N family of this manifold. And then it's, it's not difficult to show all these are uh, homeomorphic to each other. And the point is whether these are diffeomorphic to each other or not. And in order to show these are diffeomorphic, this is not diffeomorphic to each other, we just, we just, you know, lift this one to this way, this way, in this way, okay. along, uh, along PN coverings. Then we have PN, Q, and I. Then we compute cybergetin invariant of this family. And then, then we, we compute cybergetin invariant of this one. Then we show these, those are all different. And and that means this one can't be different, can't be different OP. That's the procedures. Okay? Because if this is, if this is a different OP, then when you choose universal covering, then they should be different OP. So, so, but we know it's universal covering can't be different OP. Yeah, that's the third part. That's, that's, Thank you.